Vince Carter, one of the most electrifying players of all time, arguably the best dunker of all time. Today he's seen as a great mentor for those young players in Sacramento. He's gained a lot of support after not joining a championship contending team like the Warriors or the Cavaliers, saying that he still thinks he can contribute to a team and does not want to play just 5 minutes a game, 10 minutes a game, because anyone can simply do that. He believes he still has game, and honestly, I'm with him. Despite how old he is, he still performs at a high level for a bench player, and that's all any team can ask of him. But back in the day, when Vince was the man, the star player in Toronto who captivated many fans around the world, he had a disappointing 0405 season, which in fact, he did not find basketball fun anymore. And frankly, according to many, he possessed characteristics that were simply not him. He was simply just not interested and he was selfish, which does happen occasionally with star players. He was upset number one at his role on a rebuilding team with no clear plan, especially after losing his cousin, Tracy McGrady, to Orlando. And in the 2003-04 season, they only resulted in a lottery selection and they hired hardline coach Sam Mitchell. Carter sulked and sweepwalked through 20 games as a Raptor before the Raptors ended up shipping him off to New Jersey in a trade. Now you have the backstory. Vince was not happy, he gained a new tough head coach, and Jalen Rose was Vince's teammate at the time. And according to Rose, Vince Carter and their coach Sam Mitchell got into a tussle that resulted in VC slamming the coach to the floor after an extended argument, which is pretty insane. So here's the story, but before I get started with the story, I'd really, really appreciate if you guys could hit that subscribe button. My goal is now to reach 250,000 before the end of 2017, and I would love your support. Anyway, I'll let Jalen Rose explain the story, and afterwards, I'll share my thoughts on the whole incident. Sam Mitchell incident in Toronto, locker room, check one, two, one, two. Tell him why you mad, son. I remember being in Portland. People that want events out of town at that point, they felt like he was on the training table just as much, if not more, than the basketball court. He was getting booed in intros. He was getting booed during the game. Now, this is a guy I know that is a good teammate and wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. He's just not that guy. I mean, anytime you're struggling and things aren't going so well, everybody's on edge. So we're in the locker room, and somebody's on the table getting their ankles taped. I'm sitting, like, on a stool, and Vince is sitting on the other training table getting some treatment. Sam Mitchell was standing at the table. And Sam Mitchell made a comment to Vince about always being injured and always being on the training table. So that's kind of how Vince nudged Sam. Sam nudged Vince back. And you know how sometimes you get tangled up with somebody a little bit and a little testosterone tries to take over. It's almost like arm wrestling. You go a little bit, I go a little bit, and before you know it, the resistance gets a little stronger until everybody's going as hard as they can. And then, of course, I'm Arnold Horshack on the sideline. Ooh, 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 ooh. So it's getting a little more physical. And before you know it, they tangled up and they really trying to slam each other on the ground. So Vince got this arm underneath their crouch. So now you got them up like this. And if they're kicking and screaming, you won't be able to get them up like Hulk Hogan, but you can still get them down real good. Boom! And ain't nothing you can do about it. And when you get down, it's like, <clears throat> and then we just made sure he had all of his bearings. He didn't, you know, lose a kidney in the transaction or a rib or something. And then as grown men, everybody, I hate to say it, everybody started laughing. <laughs> and then he got up and it was cool. Him and Vince gave each other dap, but obviously their relationship was never the same at that point. It's pretty crazy. According to Jalen, the incident took place in Portland before the Raptors were set to take on the Trailblazers in the team's seventh game of the season. That's right. After just six games, the rookie coach and his superstar scorer were so at it, fighting already. On top of that, this was Mitchell's first month as an NBA coach. He'd been an assistant for two seasons prior, but it's worth noting that it took him six whole games as a head coach to have Vince Carter actually care enough to body slam his own head coach. Pretty crazy. <laughs> Worse, the ploy didn't work. Relative to his previous success and brilliant work with the Nets, once he was dealt, Vince was in the mid-set of a miserable season. That game against Portland, just a few minutes after the tussle, saw Vince Carter take 9 shots and only make 2 in 22 minutes of work. To make matters worse, the Trailblazers weren't very good at all, and the Raptors lost by just 3 points. A few weeks later, Vince was dealt to the Nets, and the rest is history. 
Magically though, Vince put together what was just about a career year once he hit the net in the 2004-05 season. Carter jumped from an above average player efficiency rating of 17 in Toronto to a top 5 rating of 24.5 with New Jersey, playing an aggressive brand all around ball that Raptor fans hadn't seen before. Really, we'd only seen Vince Carter playing the 04 Olympics where he was really aggressive. Once the Nets got him though, he turned his play around, became a new type of player. Now people credit Jason Kidd for what he did with the Nets and what he did with Vince Carter, making Vince a great player, but it wasn't Jason Kidd. Although Jason Kidd may have been a contributor to Vince's success in the Nets, I believe that it was Vince Carter. He was a new man. He wanted it something else. He didn't love Toronto the way that they were treating him at that time, and he obviously didn't like the team. He hated the coach, he didn't like the management who traded away his cousin, and he just wasn't all that happy. So his Nets play of style was really, really fun to watch. He was still athletic, he was still determined, but this time he was aggressive. Something that, well, people credit Jason Kidd for, like I said, but it was Carter that was the man. The thing is, Carter never claimed close to the 2004-05 numbers over the next three seasons. And for those three seasons, he was playing with Jason Kidd. So, people can't say that it was Jason Kidd who made Vince Carter the better player. It was Vince Carter's aggressive behavior and aggressive playstyle that really allowed him to take the jump. To take that jump from the star player in Toronto to a determined wanting to win an NBA championship player in New Jersey. Unfortunately, as we all know, Vince has never won an NBA championship, and people love to hop on the fact that he should have gone to a championship contending team, but I love the fact that he went to Sacramento. It proves that he doesn't really just care about NBA championships, and personally, I want to see him play in Sacramento because I love watching Vince Carter play. So when we watch him, just enjoy what we have because he doesn't have too many years left, and hopefully he will join a championship contending team in maybe one or two years, and he can win an NBA championship because that's the one thing that Vince Carter really doesn't have. Although he wasn't a star player that won an MVP like Allen Iverson, I would still love for Vince Carter to win an NBA championship. But the jump that he went from Toronto to New Jersey in that one year was simply because of the fact that in Toronto he felt like he was treated as a dog, which is why when he came to New Jersey he had that aggressive behavior. So there you go. A pretty crazy story from a player that is definitely one of my all-time favorites. If you enjoy this video and want to watch more, be sure to smash that subscribe button. And if you're enjoying these types of videos, definitely hit that like button as well. I'd really, really appreciate it. I love all your guys' support on the road to 250,000 subscribers. New merchandise is coming out soon. I cannot wait. It's going to be dope. Like, the goal is to have the best NBA merchandise around. Let me know what players or what type of merchandise you want to see because I only want to make stuff that you guys want to buy. If you don't want to buy it, then don't buy it. But if you guys have any ideas, tweet me them, Instagram, all of that stuff in the description box down below. You can let me know your ideas, I can try and make them a reality, and you can have some dope NBA merch. So that's the plan with the new site. Anyway, if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe, leave a like, and with that said, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Take care. Peace.